you're a big horror fan like me, then chances are you have seen or have at least heard of the Final Destination series. If you haven't, the films are about a group of kids who cheat death, but then in the end, death hunts them down and they all die in freaky or wild ways. Today, we will be looking at real people who cheated death. From airplane crash survivors to survivors of serial killers. Let's talk about this and more only in today's video. Starting off this countdown, we have the Kiss Nightclub Fire. Back in 2013, a college student named Jessica DeLima Roll had plans to attend an event at a local club called Kiss Nightclub. That night, as she was getting ready though, her boyfriend begged her not to go. So she decided to not go. That night, the club caught on fire after a malfunction with the band's pyrotechnics. 238 people lost their lives. Jessica survived because of her boyfriend. But sadly, five days later, when she was picking her boyfriend up from work, she got in a car crash with a truck. She was instantly killed. Sadly, she was only able to escape death for a short period of time. In our ninth spot, we have the wedding rings. A couple of years ago, a man and his fiance went out ring shopping for their wedding. His bride-to-be took him to a store to show him the ring that she liked. They also had plans to go to the store directly across the street had they not found one at this current store. But the man fortunately did like the ring and decided to go with their first choice and head directly home after. Well, 20 minutes later, they learned that the jewelry store across the street, the one that they were about to go to, was robbed. This resulted in a shootout between the robbers and security guards at the store. A number of the customers had been shot. This would have been them if they didn't find the ring that they wanted. This is just all too freaky for me. Coming in at number 8, we have The Flight Home. According to Jeffrey Reddick, the creator of the Final Destination series, he got inspiration for the film from a real life story that happened in 2012. So he was on his flight home from Kentucky when he read an article about a woman on holiday in Hawaii. The night before her flight, she received a call from her mother warning her not to get on the plane the next day. Apparently, the mother had a terrible premonition that the plane was going to crash. So to appease her mother, she decided decided to change her flight to a later time. The next day, she found out that the plane that she was supposed to be on had crashed. Which is basically how the first Final Destination movie starts. Isn't that wild? Trust your intuition and gut instincts, folks. Moving on to number 7, we have the double plane crash. In 2007, a father named Bud Warren and his daughter Phyllis Riding were out flying in their handcrafted plane when the engine caught on fire. Thankfully, they survived after making an emergency landing in a hayfield. Four years later, the two were involved in another plane accident. This time, they weren't able to escape. The two were out flying for an air show in Texas when their cockpit started to fill with smoke. They tried to make an emergency landing, but this time, they were unsuccessful. Sadly, they both passed away after their plane burst into flames. In our sixth spot, we have Air France Flight 447. In May of 2009, Italian woman Joanna Ganthler and her husband were vacationing in Brazil and had booked a flight to Paris on May 31st. Their flight was going to be with Air France Flight 447, the plane that crashed into the Atlantic resulting in 228 deaths. But that day, her and her husband missed the flight sparing their lives. Eventually, they decided to fly to Europe a day later and then rent a car to go home. But as they were driving, their car swerved into the opposite lane and collided with a truck. Joanna sadly passed away. Her husband did survive, but with serious injuries. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Gunther Link. Gunther Link was a devout Catholic who in 2009 got trapped in an elevator. He was terrified and the whole time he was praying to be rescued. After his release, he decided to go directly to his church to give thanks to God for saving him. But as he was praying, the church's heavy stone altar fell on him and crushed him instantly. His body was found the next day by people attending mass. Moving on to number four, we have the deflected bullet. This next story is about to blow your mind. So one night back in the mid 80s, serial killer Richard Ramirez, otherwise known as the Night Stalker, paid a visit to a woman named Maria Hernandez. He stalked her from her car to her apartment and then followed her upstairs. When she got upstairs, she turned around after hearing someone behind her. That's when Ramirez fired a shot at her. But Maria raised her hands up in instinct and the bullet ended up hitting the car keys in her hand. What are the odds of that? She literally was saved by her car keys. Afterwards, she pretended that she was dead and managed to escape from Richard. She only had a broken finger. In the end, it was 
her testimony that helped lock Richard up for good. I still can't believe that. Though what are the odds that our little tiny keys, it just blows my mind. Coming in at number three, we have the cab. A couple of years ago, a man in New York City needed to hail a cab to get to his destination that night. After he hailed the cab, he realized that he left his wallet in his hotel room. So he told the cab that he would be right back and went back into the hotel to retrieve his wallet. But the cab was impatient, so he took another client instead of waiting. When the man came back out of the hotel, he caught another cab. When they were driving along, he saw that the cab that he was about to get in was overturned halfway up the block. Turns out that a drunk driver ran a red and hit the side of the taxi. Both the taxi driver and the customer lost their lives. This was going to be him had he not forgot his wallet. In our second spot, we have Jessica Redfield. Jessica Redfield was a sportscaster and blogger from Texas. In 2012, Jessica was at the Eaton Center Mall in Toronto when she decided to grab a burger and get some fresh air by eating it outside instead of inside the food court. Three minutes after Jessica left the mall, a shooting occurred. Had she not gone outside, she could have been a victim in this incident. Although Jessica survived this shooting, a month later she was involved in another one. This was the shooting that happened at a theater in Colorado during the screening of A Dark Knight Rises. Imagine that, escaping one tragedy just to be shortly involved in another. And in our number one spot today, we have Daredevil Bobby Leach. I swear, this has to be one of the craziest stories of all time. So Bobby Leach was a well-known daredevil. He's done a number of stunts, including going over the Niagara Falls in a barrel, which he survived. However, in 1926, while doing a tour in New Zealand, Bobby Leach died after slipping on an orange peel. Yes, an orange peel. This dude survived going over the falls, only later to die from a fall. Now, it wasn't the fall that killed him immediately. He actually suffered a leg injury from the fall and his leg later became infected and required amputation and he died after complications with the surgery. But still, that just blows my mind. All right guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below which one of these stories you thought was the craziest. Also, let me know, have you seen the Final Destination series? I've seen a bunch of them, but like, they're so gory. Like that tanning bed scene. Don't get me started, I swear. Anyway, speaking of comments, let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top 10 strange experimental communes that are too good to be true part two. Walter Green commented, howdy Lindsay. Well, howdy Walter Green, how you doing? <laughs> John Connor the seventh. I feel like this guy is from the royal family. John Connor the seventh commented, don't mind Lindsay Ivan, she's just my baby mama. Definitely not. Never mind, John Connor. I thought it was gonna be like a classy, like, hello, thank you for your magnificent videos. Instead, it's, yo, she's my baby mama. No. <laughs> Mr. Candle commented, shout out, please. Sure, here you go, Mr. Candle. Here's your shout out. Thanks so much for uh, watching the video. Hopefully, you gave it a big thumbs up. TJ Judd commented, good that you saw this comment first. Actually, I didn't see this comment first. It was nowhere near the very first comment. Uh, but I'll give you a shout out anyway. So there you go, TJ Judd. Justin Cameron commented, hey Lindsay, I heard that producer Chris, all this is for you Chris, is actually one of your secret ninja cow army. Is this, is this true Chris? Are you, are you, <laughs> are you part of my secret ninja cow army? He is. He's actually a cow in disguise. That's why sometimes you hear him mooing back there. <laughs> And now we're at our second second spot. Moo. Yeah, that's Chris. All right, guys, that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, aka the leader of this secret cow army. And I'll see you when I see you.